computer to the Atlantis ground launch uh, or uh, onboard computers, ground launch sequencer. To well, I grew up in the 60s, and uh, during the 60s we were uh, racing to the moon with the Russians. And of course, every kid that grew up in the 60s uh, was enamored by that, the whole concept of flying in space, and I was no exception. Is continuing uh, exploration in our genes? Yes, we have to continue doing it. That's just what we do. Six, five, three main engines up and burning. Two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis, opening a new chapter in the completion of the International Space Station. Well, I, I think it was extremely interesting and um, exciting to be a part of the ICBMs and the um, you know, Mercury, uh, Gemini, Apollo, Space Lab, and uh, Viking to go to Mars. Uh, and then, you know, Apollo 17 was 1972. And then we entered into the Soyuz mission with Russia. To me, that was a crossroads. Uh, after we went to the moon in 72, the space program seemed to take on a new direction, a direction I didn't like. Well, I think uh, it's changed considerably in perception in the minds of the general public. If you compare the way that we looked at war, for instance, uh, in World War II time frame, I mean, the millions of people were killed, uh, thousands of Americans, hundreds of thousands of Americans were killed, and, and, and people uh, aren't as accepting of that sort of sacrifices that used to be, and I think that's okay, and that's good. We, I hate wars. <laughs> I hate them with a passion. When I was in Los Alamos, we were working on a nuclear-powered rocket engine way back in the, around 1960. The Nerva, the Kiwi, uh, testing them at Jackass Flats in Nevada, using hydrogen and nuclear sources. And that, that program got canceled, and I never understood why this country would want to cancel such, a, such an important program as that. The first uh, time we went to the, around the moon in Apollo 8 was, uh, was an incredibly risky undertaking, and, and we kept succeeding in, in these things. Uh, and in some regards, that may have established a bit of complacency. Uh, um, to the point where people didn't care so much about the Apollo program anymore, and that was a contributor, uh, along with some economic and political things, uh, issues that uh, caused for the cancellation of the last three Apollo missions. The Hubble telescope did a couple things. Uh, first of all, it it was a very aggressive program. It was uh, scientifically uh, very sophisticated, and it launched with a major flaw huge disaster at first and everybody uh, looked at the, the whole Hubble program as NASA's big joke on, on the world because it was such a failure. Then NASA approved, uh, and that's just not the agency, but everyone supporting the agency Ball Aerospace here in Boulder, as a matter of fact, uh, proved that uh, no problem is too large or uh, too insurmountable for people with uh, uh, motivation and intelligence to solve. Of course, I, I'm, I favor manned space because I, I think having a human mind in space uh, brings so much more value than just uh, robots to send uh, to uh, different places. They certainly have their place too, but I, I don't think we should give up manned space. The telescope has rewritten the astronomy books uh, probably on a monthly basis. Now, let's bring it up to this point right now in our, in our history where we are uh, experiencing, experiencing economic uh, difficulties. And is it the right thing to do to continue uh, a space program that everyone feels is uh, is too expensive and not worth the money. And uh, I, I will add that if people really looked at how much money we spent 
relative to the whole overall budget in this country, they would be kind of surprised at how small the dollars are uh, compared to dollars we spend in, in other areas, for instance. Uh, we spend more on athletic shoes than we do on, on human spaceflight as a, as a population. design things for the Moon and Mars, so I interviewed each of the 12 astronauts that have walked on the Moon. But I was interested not only in what they encountered in their spacesuits walking around on the Moon, but what was it like to crawl into the limb at night with no spacesuit and, you know, pour a cup of coffee, uh, make their meals, uh, sleep. Uh, I wanted to know that aspect of it. It was very, very interesting. and. Uh, in every case, I ask them to lean back and think about uh, the spiritual side and what that meant to them. And uh, I would say there wasn't a single one of them that wasn't changed by in their spirituality uh, of uh, being on the moon and looking back at the earth and realizing how uh, how vast our our universe really is. Do we have the right to stop exploring? permanently right now because we think it's not worth it no we don't I don't think as human beings we don't have that right to future generations to stop uh, you know could we uh, slow down for a little bit yeah maybe we could do that if that, that makes sense but we don't have the right to stop and, uh, and there's still the inspiration aspect for the younger generation uh, how are we going to excite uh, the uh, fifth graders in the country to go into math and science if they don't see something out there that is really interesting to them well, so I think spaceflight is the, is the one of the grandest, not the only, but one of the grandest human adventures that we have pursued in the, uh, probably in the history of the human race. But uh, um, I think it is a source of excitement for the younger generation. It is a source of, of national pride. And uh, I, I'm not saying that we have to be number one in the world, but I think we need to be playing in the game. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of uh, national interests that are, are met if, uh, if we continue a space program. And I'm, I'm pretty passionate about, about it. That's why I committed my, my whole life and career to it. And uh, will continue to be passionate until the day I die, I'm sure.